people joining us. So welcome uh, to the October 4th WOOCAP Steering Committee. Um, hope everybody is doing well. Um, we're going to get started. Um, so again, there are two signups. Please, if you're visiting, um, use the meeting attendee sign up. Uh, if you are a member, we're going to do a roll call. Uh, we was hoping to get most of you here. Um, from that, we're going to do um, a welcome and a co-leads report uh, from EIP. Um, we've got some follow-up from previous meetings, and then we've got a few presentations um, on greening efforts, town hall updates, and then as usual, um, we've got a uh, meeting evaluation. Um, so let's, um, and like, I guess I could do this now. Well, actually, we'll get to it in a moment. Um, so we'll start uh, with the roll call. And if we can start with is Bill, is Bill a booty here? No, I didn't see Bill. Is Laura Cariola here? Brent? I see Brent. Yep, I see him. I think you're on mute. We need an we need we need yeah we we need an audio uh confirmation for you Brent. So you are indeed here, indeed. Uh, Reverend Ambrose Carroll, Bridget Cook, Kevin Cruson, everyone, Richard Gro, Kalila Haynes. Hi here. Matt Heft or Rebecca. Sony Johnson, Tamara White, Miss Alverdia Owens. Gotcha. I just clicked Colin or Selena. Um, or I see oh, Kathy. Kathy. Yeah. I see Kathy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give you a little bold there. You get a bold and a check mark. Um, I see Maria. Yeah, hello. David Woolley. Yep, I'm here. Okay, I'm going to give you a check as well. Robert Phillips. Layla Sadat. Lily Wu. Wanda Stewart. Yes. Okay, you, you get a check also. Okay. So... Um, once we get to the presentations and the questions and answers, um, we, we've, um, we're going to have a, a bit of a different protocol. Um, and so we're going to not take questions and comments during the presentation so we can get through them, um, although you can um, um, provide questions in the chat if you'd like, and if the presenters um, can get to them, they will. Um, and then we're, we really want to hear from the steering committee members. And so that will be the protocol. We're going to take the steering committee members questions and comments first. Uh, then we will go to the general public. Um, and then we will go to the co-leads. So uh, West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project and folks from the district will wait until others have commented and um, submitted their questions before um we take their comments and uh questions so we've got a couple of new steering committee members um and we'll just let them say a couple of words um tram Nguyen, and adriana Al alvarado is adriana on i didn't see adriana but tram is uh thanks 
Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tran Nguyen. This is my first meeting. I'm um, Deputy Director for Health Equity Policy and Planning at the Alameda County Public Health Department, um, supporting my colleague, uh, Adriana Alvarado, who's um, our Director of the Asthma Program, is um, is also joining. Hopefully, she can come shortly. And i um, happy to be here um, uh, replacing a colleague um, who used to represent us, uh, Maria um, Dominguez, and uh, before that we were part of the um, uh, the AB six one seven in West Oakland um, a few years ago as well. So thank you for having me. Great. And as you know, this meeting is always being recorded. Um. All right, we're going to move to Nicole. Thanks, Randolph. Welcome to our October steering committee meeting. Um, hard to believe it's already fall. And uh, yeah, here we are. So quick update. Um, I'm going to start with the West Oakland link, which is part of a larger project known as the Bay Skyway. Um, and what it essentially does is it creates a safe and accessible space for bicyclists and pedestrians to move from West Oakland to the port and onto the uh, Bay Bridge Trail. This is extremely important for, uh, for West Oaklanders because we consistently and historically have um, had to contend with trucks and not having safe spaces to commute and to recreate. So West Oakland Link is a solution right, for that. And WOPE is the community partner for this project. And um, we are really um, excited about the progress that we've made in our first meeting, uh, one of many. Uh, next slide, please. So we had our kickoff meeting and some things that, that I wanted to highlight for the steering committee is from the survey results um, and in conversation with residents and participants, the one thing that we saw as a consistent theme was um, a concern around how do we reduce air pollution and exposure, right? So what mitigation efforts will actually take place and how do we make sure that the West Oakland link is accessible for all types of folks? Um, how is it visually pleasing? And how do we ensure that safety, right? Uh, on all levels is ma maintained. And we have several more meetings coming up. Our next one being October 17th. I will drop the event right in the chat for those of you who are interested so that you can participate, but wanted to uh, just provide an update about our progress there. Um, any questions about the West Oakland link, what it is, uh, what it's not, um, how you can get involved before I move on? Once again, starting with the steering committee members, then to Thanks, the Randolph. I was going to re I was going to yes, reiterate and that. The <laughs> and then I we see your uh, hand, Miss Margaret, up, and we'll take uh, and then the additional comments from EIP last. <laughs> steering committee and we members. We have the sign um, sign in sheet for. I, I, I'm sorry, but this is more, this is more about the. I can't read the contents of the slides. They are too small. Okay. I don't know how to adjust mm -hmm. my tablet gotcha. to the font that's readable. Gotcha. Ms. Margaret, I'll, I'll put the link to the slide deck in the chat, and then you can just have the slide deck open for yourself. Yeah. And just in terms I'm, of folks, and, if, but I'm not only just advocating yeah, for myself. How exactly. many others? Yeah. If there are others, others who can't read it? if there are others who can't read, um, this is um, obviously talking about the things that are most important uh, to you for the path through West Oakland. And at the top of the list is reducing air pollution. Um, then it goes access for all visual attraction, crime-free area. Uh, right in the middle is equitable, equitable use for the marginalized residents, sustainable development, sense of community place, reducing traffic, accidents, service and amenities, and then the last is others, consider drivers. Thanks. 
Quand Any other questions um, about West Oakland Link? We will definitely, um, Ms. Margaret, um, factor in um, the visibility issue for our survey results. I think that's very important. Thank you for highlighting that. Any other questions about West Oakland Link before we move on? Hi, can I ask yes, a question? I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, please. Questions are welcome. Layla. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering if you could um, say more about um, what kind of what kind of services and amenities would be um, examples of what would be on the trail? Yes, and to start with, we just had our kickoff meeting two weeks ago, um, and it's one in a series of 12 meetings. So our next meeting, which is a design deep dive, is October 17th. Uh, the link to sign up is in the chat. Um, in terms of amenities, that's pretty open-ended right now, right? Um, I, I personally have ideas about what amenities could be provided, but we are truly leaving that um, to be discussed by the community. Um, what are things that are important to them, right? Whether it's having an area where um, there are benches, right? To uh, pull off to rest, right? A scenic view, or if someone needs to um, add air to their bike tires, or if um, um, someone just needs to exit the trail for whatever reason, what are the entry and the exit points, right? Because those are amenities, right? Being able to get on and get off um, with ease. So those types of things um, have yet to be determined and that's where that community input and feedback is extremely important so that we, that the West Oakland Link is truly capturing what is important to the folks who will be using it regularly or even occasionally. What does that look like? Okay, great. Thank you for sharing. Great. Alverdia? Yes. I think you I think you just answered my question, Nicole. That the link is a a group that's working on the trail, right? It's not for the yeah, steering committee it, itself. No, I mean the steering committee, my reporting back on it is because mm -hmm. the steering committee is essential in this process, right? Um, to uh, provide feedback, to provide suggestions and more importantly to say hey Nicole are you missing something right you're facilitating these meetings these community engagement meetings are there things that you're not considering okay you just confused me are you saying <laughs> that all of the steering committees are supposed to be at that meeting no the steering committee meetings? no the steering committee is always invited and welcomed and encouraged to attend and when because I know steering committee members are not able to attend every meeting this is why okay, I'm reporting. So basically, you're, saying you're a representative for the steering committee. Okay. That I thank am. You. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Great. Any other comments? Steering committee members, general public, KIP. All right. Moving on. All right, follow up from previous meeting. So in September, we reported on Schnitzer Steel. Um, we had the fire, right, August 9th. And EIP was able to organize quickly, right, not only a um, social media campaign, right, and a community organizing uh, space, but they were also able to convene an emergency task force. And our next slide will highlight um, additional updates from WOAP and agency meetings. Next slide, please. So highlights, right, in terms of what the community is demanding in terms of enforcement is to make sure that the 2001 settlement requirements are actually being enforced, right? We're 22 years in, right, so we need we need that done. Increasing penalties for these types of environmental events, improving monitoring and reporting, implementing community warning systems. There was no notification that this was happening 
right? So residents had to experience the poor air quality um, and we were left guessing what was actually happening and providing community restitution. Brian or Ms. Margaret, is there anything else that I'm missing from the EPA Rapid Response Task Force meeting? Um, I think there's still, uh, the agencies are still exploring the uh, scope of their authority and how much they can, you know, how much they can lean on this company. Um, there are legal, there's legal authority, there's regulatory authority. And so, you know, the key thing is that the usual tools that are used are, um, reliant on a company being cooperative and having a willingness to come into compliance. And this company is not particularly stated, shown or demonstrated a willingness to follow the rules. And so the rapid response uh, task force is exploring all the tools that they have at their, uh, at their disposal to figure out a, a good approach. Um, we do need community members to continue to be engaged. Um, it's, as we all know, it's important that a community voice be consistent and um, that we don't drop back and figure, well, the agencies will, will take care of it. So there will be, uh, I think the next step here, I think there's been a decision that there will be a quarterly meeting by the Rapid Response Task Force and we will be reaching out to folks and, um, to make those meetings more public <clears throat> in the uh, in the coming months. Great, Randolph. Yes. Did I, I? I must miss something from the West Oakland link to talk about Snitzer. I missed something here. Did you have something on the link? Yeah, this is the co leads. This is the co leads report back, Miss Margaret. Yeah, That's why I understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But I'm yeah. asking, can I ask the question? Right. My question is Did Alberta understand the word about the link? The word link? Because I felt as though she was questioned about the word link. Hmm. Okay. And I and and I I would like to hear. I would like to hear what she understands about this project and the word link. Well, let's ask her, Miss Alberta. Yeah, I'm I'm here. That wasn't my question, Miss okay. Margaret. My my question was: Was the steering committee uh, supposed to? Uh, is this a um, like a mandatory meeting for the steering committee? Or, or was it just for the link uh, uh, people? Project team. Uh, yeah, the project team. Okay. And, and she's and basically what it, the result was, she's there as a representative to uh, bring the information back to the steering oh. committee. That's what EIPs, that's, yeah, that's what we made EIPs role to do. Okay. All right. I, 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 I will just want to make sure you had clarification what yeah. we was trying to do. The yes, link, I did. Mm -hmm. the link well, is not a strategy of of our one of our strategies A B six plus seven, but because of the proximity of the project and relationship to air quality, we we as EIP influence the project as part of AB 617 on the peripheral, on, on, on the edges, because the, the original project, the original project did not have a lot of language about emission reduction and health. Gotcha. Yes. Are you are you clear? Um, are you clear? Do you need any more clarity, Alvernia? Are you good? No, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Miss Margaret. So, 
So, so Randolph, one thing I just want to maybe this is clear. It we have suggested that we are representing the community on this. We are host. We are co-hosting the meetings. These are public meetings. If you have any interest in a bike route across the Bay Bridge, or it's you know its impacts on West Oakland, or how it should look, or whether it should have a you know a sign or a plaque or a park bench, then no, y'all should come to these meetings. We are not there to represent your voice. We are simply co-hosting these community meetings. Um, the community needs to come and represent its own interests. Mm -hmm. And so that meeting is on the 17th and Nicole is gonna provide the Eventbrite link um, in the chat. Yes, the yes. Eventbrite link is in the and chat. Also, and also send it out directly to all the uh, AB617 participants. Yeah, you'll probably get a couple of announcements before then. Do All we right, have so we're good on link? Do we um do we have anything else on Schnitzer? And I saw Kalila's hand. Where is that from before? Or you're good? Okay. Uh, anything else on Schnitzer? And just while yes. we have, yes. What's that? Okay. I, I understand the rapid response team went out, you know, the uh, the day of the fire, evening of the fire or whatever. Um, are the citations that are issued, are the fines increasing with each, uh, each violation? Like each time they have something and they receive violations for it, do the fines uh, incrementally increase relative to the number of infractions? Don't, don't know. Um, I'm not sure whether that's a fact today. One of the things we want is for the fines to become more and more uh, punitive because we don't think this company is going to pay attention otherwise. Uh, uh, I want to be clear on something. I think I don't think we've been very clear on what rapid response team means. That's not the fire department that showed up. The state of California, the the, the California Environmental Protection Agency, mm -hmm. made an agreement two years ago with the federal United States Environmental Protection Agency. A kind of they call it a memorandum of understanding that they would work together to bring their joint en enforcement power to issues in in uh, communities in West Oakland, in, in, you know, in California, sorry. The so joining forces between the federal government and the state government. And so in, in Oakland, this is the first incident that they've had to bring this combined effort together. So they call it the Rapid Response Enforcement Task Force. So this is different from the folks who showed up to put the fire out or do all that, right? Right. This is yeah. uh, this is the federal government and the state saying we are going to really focus attention on this problem because this this company seems to not be paying attention. Right. Uh, so that's why there'll be this series of meetings. And what okay. they're figuring out is what we're pushing them on and what we're what we're talking to them about is uh, how are they going to use their enforcement authority? Mm -hmm. With this or with this company that has demonstrated themselves to be a bad actor, uh, and so you'll learn more. We'll hear more about it, and mm -hmm. also anyone, if anyone in uh, on this call, anyone on the steering committee, or members of the public uh, who live in West Oakland or or the Bay Area, because the Bay, whole Bay Area was affected. Mm -hmm. If you have a specific interest in attending those meetings, make sure that you reach out to uh, Nicole and say, I wanna be at the rapid response meetings and we'll make sure that you're on the invite list and uh, and that you know when and where those meetings are. Awesome. And okay, um, thank thank, you. yeah, also thanks to Lily for putting the link to the memorandum of understanding that Brian was referring to that is in the, the chat. And okay. before we move, I'm just gonna, um, I just One wanna take- uh -huh. Excuse me. Uh 
excuse me, sure. but one more thing to add to it, that I was the asked by both of the agencies, US EPA and CalPA, as a community member to, to be a signature to this process. And what we are, another thing that we are, we are facing is that a, a couple, just two or three things. One, there has not been a central place of tracking of all the violations between the various agencies on Snitzer. Okay, so that goes from US EPA, Cal EPA, CAR, DTSC, the Water Board, the county, the uh, county DA, this, uh, the federal, uh, uh, the federal level, the state level of uh, of uh, the state, of th those attorneys have have not had a real tracking of all the violations, their air quality. So we had a we we at almost at the beginning stage to do reform of how such a business is not being tracked about its violations. We are at the forefront of making this more valuable and viable to the West Oakland community. Because this, we will be the first such community for such a business to have this type of, of multiple agencies sitting at a table redefining environmental justice, health, structural, structural upgrades, and all those things pertaining if that this business should be here in West Oakland. Mm -hmm. And didn't you all discuss that at one of the other uh, meetings? There was a presentation around the multiple agencies and how the reporting information was not congruent. So I think that, that should go um, pretty far in making that happen. Um, I think we have one. Alicia, are you up or no? You're good. I yeah, I'm good. I okay. I do appreciate that comment though, Miss Margaret. And um, I guess one question I have, if if I if I may, uh, would just be: Do we want to? Is it? I, I know that you are active in the CAC space, which is more regional in nature, has that broader scope. And so I'm just wondering if. Um, I mean, I know we have this very unique situation, Schnitzer. I mean, it's not unique, but we do have a like a a work group focused on Schnitzer right now. I'm curious though, if you know, if you have any opinion about having that conversation about joint enforcement, coordinated enforcement, kind of through a more regional or you know, kind of a broader scope versus trying to kind of like push for it through the West Oakland project. No, no, it's, it's exactly what you said. That is the body who we are conversing with and having communications with. That is the the, the exact body. The Schnitzer the, body, right? No. I said, I'm, 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 let me I think, a, I, think, I think there's a confusion over bodies here. Uh, let, Alicia, can I finish? Can I, finish I know, my but, I, but I, before you finish, Miss Margaret, first, this wasn't an agendized for a long conversation, but if Alicia's talking about the Air District's Community Advisory Committee, I, and That's I'm saying I'm, not, I'm asking her to dismiss that for this moment. Okay, so I I, I think we should probably agendize I mean, this I, for I, another I, time. I'm saying it offline. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Thanks. we will do that. And just while we have a um, a, just before we um switch, and we're going to go to the um back to Nicole. Just wanted to recognize um Tim Williams. Oh, we're gonna. I was gonna uh, introduce him earlier. Um, when we were doing introductions, the new uh, the acting deputy direct uh, acting deputy executive officer of equity and community programs for Bay Area air quality management, 
um, uh, district. Welcome aboard, Tim. Um, uh, thanks, Randolph. Just, just I want to disrupt can. the meeting. Hello, Miss Margaret. <laughs> just a, just a quick hello to everyone here. Don't want to disrupt anything. Just listening in. Uh -huh. I just commend all right. you all for your dedication um, to push this forward. Great, great background also. Um, okay, uh, back to you, Nicole. And I'm gonna get your, uh, your, Zoom, your, sir, your Zoom, I mean, your screen back on. Yeah, and here's a recap of the steering committee meeting survey from September. Um, some quick highlights is Month over month, right, we see that the overall satisfaction in terms of understanding is improving, opportunities for growth, um, the ability to, to participate could use improvement. It's essential, especially for steering committee members, that you complete the survey at the end of each meeting. This allows us to be more effective and also to meet you where you are. These meetings are designed to move strategies forward and we can only move them forward if we if we're reaching you and if the information that we are providing the speakers that we are inviting the topics that we are hosting makes sense so please fill out the survey and that also goes to residents and community members who are also participating in the steering committee meetings please fill out the survey this helps us be better for you and specifically for west oakland Great, and we'll share it again at the end so you can uh, evaluate the entire meeting. On to enforcement updates. This is Alicia. Okay. Let me just navigate to my notes. Okay, so as um, our BACMED staff, enforcement staff uh, mentioned last month, that would be Ying Yu, um, that we have a new notice of violation uh, interactive tool um, and it's now it's now live. So the screenshot on the on the um, screen there kind of is it gives you kind of like the example of what of what this interactive tool looks like. OK, so you see there's a search feature at the top um, where you can put an address of a site and it's really about looking at um, uh, notices of violations that have been issued for specific facilities. So you could look up Schnitzer, you could look up um, uh, CAS, you could look up CWS, those types of things. Um, any, uh, you know, any facility that has a, uh, any kind of a violation. Um, so it's going to record things like the facility's location, the name of it, um, and their current enforcement status and any penalty amount. Um, so yeah, we encourage you to, you know, take a look at it, navigate around um, with it. And um, again, this is for transparency and making sure that community is informed in real time uh, about notices of violation. And so the next piece is about uh, updates from last month. So last month, as you'll remember, was about uh, in September, we talked about enforcement. And so one of the things that we did was we had a presentation on the uh, Cal California Environmental Protection Agency co um, coordinated complaint system. And we heard during that uh, presentation from the steering committee from you all and there were some requests for Cal EPA to update things. So we heard about, um, you know, encampment fires. We heard about kind of tire burning from sideshows and things. So, um, you know, we have, BACMED has, you know, kind of initiated a follow-up with Hosti. And um, so we'll continue to work through that uh, over the next, um, you know, over the next bit of time. And also kind of wanted to give you a report back on the other things that we heard last month. So. Uh, again, about, um, you know, kind of thinking out of the box about what has, you know, what imp impacts air quality and what can be recorded in any, you know, violation or any complaint system. So that would be, again, the donuts and the encampment fires. And then um, also heard about the need to prioritize truck-related enforcement and take a look at the ports appointment system waiver, specifically because it's uh, having, uh, causing trucks to line up. 
And then the um, other thing that we heard was the need for enforcement of truck idling in the community. Okay. And so what we will be doing over the next few months is, you know, having these conversations with these agencies again. So with CARB on the truck idling, with port on, you know, import, uh, um, appointment system. Um, and so, you know, kind of working through the, the process to be better and to, you know, kind of improve our systems. Um, so are there any questions? Uh, and also, you know, did we hear you right? Is this an accurate reflection of, of last month's meeting and, you know, kind of the key points that were made? There's a question in the chat from Alexis, if you want to share it, Alexis. Uh, sure. Yeah, I just had a question about making sure that as, um, you know, time goes by and companies kind of rebrand and change their names, hmm, that's cool. yeah. covers that. so Schnitzer Steel recently changed their name to Re Radius Recycling, and I just want to make sure all their violations past and future are really uh, connected. Yeah, that's a good one. yeah, totally. Um, and we can't, I mean, I, I can definitely pass that along. And uh, the other key information that is asked for is the address. So those, those violations stay up with the address also. All right. Uh, Alberto. I have a question about the idling time. Mm -hmm. And I think that the maximum is 30 minutes. I'm not understanding why they're allowed to idle at all. Right there, um, you know, I would have to look back at the at the guidelines, um, and that's you know, again, it's it's from the guidelines uh, that uh, that back met issues, and mm -hmm. um, so as part of the you know exploration of the ports appointment system, we can look more closely at that. Okay, my, my reasoning is if the trucks are not moving forward and they're waiting till their turn or whatever, mm -hmm. it should only be crank up or whatever if they're advancing in the line and that's it. Then they should be cutting it off. I think it's highly unnecessary to have idle time at all. There may be may be a reason but i'm sure somebody can get back to you okay yeah right i'm now. just yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a that's a long time sure. to be putting out emissions and stuff into the air 30 minutes is a very long time yes or or you know consider if it, if they need to idle say probably no more than five or ten minutes five minutes actually because if if people have a move in five minutes you need to be cutting those trucks off that's right. So, so um, that I, I just wanted to get that across because yeah. that's something that's kind of I've, I've been hearing that the thirty minutes. That's an awfully long time to uh, put our community at risk because it contributes to all of that the toxic stuff that's coming off the trucks. Thank yeah. you very much. I'm quiet now. <laughs> Thank you. You are complete. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and if we do, we have more on enforcement. Do you want to move? We can. Okay. So let's get on to some good news. Um, the good news is that we've gotten some wins in EJ for uh, the general plan update. You want you can take that. Yeah, I got it. So um, last week the. Um, City Council adopted a resolution which did a number of things. So they certified the um, environmental impact report for this phase of the general plan, adopted the new safety element, adopted the new environmental justice element, which WOCAP was a big contributor to, um, adopt associated amendments to other general plan elements, and then adopted truck intensive zoning requirements and more stringent rules. Um, and also there were other important industrial zoning updates that were um, initiated in the WOCAP. So things that we had said in our original WOCAP strategies that they rolled into the um, new um, uh, updates. And then the another exciting thing is that 
There was an amendment that directs the city administrator's office to organize an interagency working group um, for both Oakland city staff and outside agencies, including the port, to work on the air quality actions in the EJ element. So like a direct result of the WOCAP advocacy. So everyone should pat yourselves on the back. Um, and there's a link in here where you can see our original WOCAP comment letter from June that we um, included kind of the one-to-one -one city staff responses in there. So you can see what things they included and what things they're kind of saving for later. Awesome. Yeah. So we see we see some claps. Give your all yourselves a hand there. Um, we're going to take David. Yeah, um, just a question. Um, first of all, um, Beth did a great job on all this stuff. It was not easy, and so I want to, I want to thank you for for your efforts on it. Uh, and you, you, you helped us make make an impact. Um, I wanted to ask, is is this is this set of changes different from the housing one did that occur earlier or was that rolled in as part of this that was separate that was separate wait alicia correct me if i'm wrong but that was separate those there was some that were with the housing and then this was this was a later round from yeah the, for the housing. ej element of yeah. the gpu and then the, the second question i have is um so are the well, I, I thought there was going to be a separate industrial lands part of the uh, plan, general plan. It, was this that is in Kalila. Maybe this is a place where you should chime in since this is your job. <laughs> Kalila, are you around? Yeah. Um, Thanks. So the first part of phase one, which we just wrapped up, just included an industrial land study that um, <clears throat> is on the website. And I can also share that again with Who you. Who is speaking? That's Kalila. This is Kalila. Right. And then phase two will include, um, <clears throat> um, along with the land use transmission elements and industrial lands policy package. And that we're getting started on phase two. It will kick off in November of this year. So in about a month. Okay, great. And then the, um, where can I look at the truck intensive zoning things that, are uh, referred to in the fifth bullet here on this on this page. Yes, I can put the link in the chat. That's going to be on the zoning amendments website, and it's going to be. Um, I'm not sure the exhibit numbers. I don't want to get them wrong, but I'll put the exhibit numbers in the chat for you to um, download. Okay, thanks everyone. Great, and Kalila, you have a request to take a virtual bow. So, congratulations on all your work. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, Miss Margaret, yeah, I think you're up. You had your hand up before. If you're talking, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? We can. Okay. Uh, maybe I forgot to report out because I've been so involved in other things. That I was at the meeting for the, the first draft of the first phase of the journal plan to 2 a.m. in the morning. Okay. He's a true, you a trooper. With, with deeply rooted, who is the community engagement group? And that we, with the support of EIP and the West Oakland Community Action Plan, was there and then at the one of the final things that had that occurred from our city council meeting that was needs to be covered in the next six months is the interagency working group for pollution needs to happen. And one of the things that EIP is doing, it will be having a 
say, uh, taking the new city administrator who is in charge of getting the interagency working group off the ground on a tour of West Oakland. Awesome. Two o'clock in the morning. I know you were just getting started. They didn't know who they were messing with. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning? I, hey, I, I hey, forgot hey. about Hey, Ms. I forgot. Margaret. I forgot about the legacy. I forgot about the legacy of how <laughs> I forgot my I forgot my pillow, my blanket. Yes, <laughs> your your represent your your reputation precedes you. We know how you roll. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a ride or die. Yes, uh, we, yes, this we know. Yes, <laughs> that's great. Awesome. Okay, so uh, once again, congratulations, um, and we're gonna move. <laughs> our uh, presenters. We've got some uh, some greening action happening here. Oh. Oops. Oh. Can you can you go back to the list of speakers? I can if, just, I, if I can get oh, my oh. if I can get my I'm just gonna <laughs> briefly say yes. we have David Moore here from the city of Oakland who's been managing the urban forest plan, which is we were hoping the full draft would be out by today's meeting. It's not out yet, but we're going to get a sneak peek at some parts of it. Then Brent's going to share just a quick, you know, update on like the scope of work for this Prescott Greening project that we always hear about, but a lot of people aren't exactly sure what this project is. So hopefully this will clarify that. And then um, Wanda Stewart from Common Vision is going to share kind of the on the ground greening challenges and opportunities that kind of are, you know, an example of the implementation of how the urban forest plan works. And after all that, we have time to discuss in a large group some of the selected strategies from the urban forest plan. So we'll kind of get feedback and we'll be submitting a comment letter on the urban forest plan after you know we hear from you all and get to see the full public draft. So that's the framing of where we're headed tonight. Awesome, David. You're up. Uh, good evening, everyone. Can someone tell me if you can hear me okay? We can hear you just fine. Wonderful. I want to start by saying thank you for the invitation to present to the steering committee. Um, I'm always impressed by how well organized, how technical, and just how dedicated this group is. And it's a pleasure to share good news with you. Um, I have a slideshow about the urban forest plan, which is honestly a little bit difficult to present because the plan is not public. So it's hard to consolidate just the right amount of information and just the right context without, um, without divulging uh, the whole plan. But I've received some great guidance so far. Um, so please um, save your questions and I'll do my best to answer them um, at the end of the presentation if provided time. Um, next slide, please. So today we will review a, a quick summary of what the urban forest plan is, how the plan specifically connects to the West Oakland Climate Action Plan Strategy 10, some implementation examples, and finally, how to provide public comment. And the public comment period will be coming up soon. I'll tell, tell you more about that soon. Next slide, please. So WOCAP Strategy 10 um, is about greening. Um, and it's about urban canopy uh, expansion uh, through tree planting and maintenance, as well as protecting trees in West Oakland. Um, this includes partnering with local nonprofits, encouraging tree planting on private property, and working with the community on tree maintenance um, and the development of an urban forest plan. So good news is that we used all of these insights and, and they dovetail quite nicely into the urban forest plan. I think you'll see that this uh, plan supports the WOCAP's work very uh, uh, in, in great detail. Next slide, please. So the urban forest plan is a citywide plan, but I will not be talking about the whole citywide other, other parts of it. Um, today, we'll talk about what affects directly West Oakland. Now, though it's a citywide plan, there is a focus on equity. In summary, this means prioritizing tree services and tree canopy equity in Oakland's frontline communities. West Oakland is one of those. 
Uh, the plan included an analysis of Oakland's urban forest and city operations. It included input from the Oakland community, um, as well as data and community-driven management recommendations. Uh, we did this through a community engagement process, which I'll speak about soon. It's big picture planning. Um, this uh, plan also requires adoption by city council and it requires funding for implementation. Next slide, please. The urban forest plan is not about fire prevention policy. That'll be handled in the vegetation management plan, which is similar in, in name and coming out in a similar timeline, but very uh, different from what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, th this, you, David? yes. You have one, we missed one. Do you, do you wanna go past that? Oh. Okay, sure. Um, so are you sure? I, I would, I'd be happy to finish that slide and then come back to community engagement. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, so the urban forest plan, yeah, many tree, street trees grow in sidewalks and streets. And this is intersectional with uh, sidewalk, uh, sidewalks, but it, this is not a sidewalk policy document. Um, it, the urban forest plan is also not specific to projects. It does not cite a list of dozens or hundreds of specific projects that should be done. Um, it more so supports community projects and I'll explain more of that later. And the urban forest plan is not automatically implemented if adopted. We still need to find funding uh, to implement it. And this may be done through public-private partnerships as well. And I'm gonna speak to more about that later. Next slide, please. Um, so ways that I, here's, here's a couple snips out of the plan that draft that I wanted to share with you is that we very specifically say, if you look at the green box on the left, the urban forest plan supports strategies outlined in the West Oakland Community Action Plan. And sorry if I used that acronym wrong before, um, which calls for a comprehensive urban canopy and vegetation plan. Um, and then we go into more detail on that. And we say the same thing for the East Oakland Neighborhoods Initiative. So um, on the right-hand side, you'll, there was many implementation partners. I just copy and pasted a couple from here. One of them is the Woke West Oakland I I Environmental Indicators Project, Common Vision, and Caltrans. I know like the city of Oakland does not have jurisdiction over making actions on the Caltrans property. That's their jurisdiction. but we could see them as potential implementation partners. And just want to put these specifics in here as um, evidence that we are taking this very seriously. Next slide, please. Um, so this slide shows on the left, um, a heat index map of surface temperatures. And the map on the right shows street tree canopy. On the left, the red and orange indicate hotter surface temperature. You might feel some of that today. I turned my fan off and I'm just sweating in here. Um, we are just having some unseasonably warm weather and surface temperature is a problem. The, the, the buzzword is urban heat islands. The concrete heats up the glass and, and uh, asphalt heat up and they, uh, make air quality worse. It also, you know, can lead to things like uh, unexpected, you know, heat stroke or elder mortality. They tend to be the victims of people who don't see the heat coming. They don't have air conditioning. Um, and trees can lower street temperatures by two to nine degrees, you know, Fahrenheit just by shading them. And if you look at on the right hand side, this is a citywide map. Yes, I know it's citywide. If you look, you can focus your eyes on the West Oakland part and you'll see that the street tree canopy is low in West Oakland. And these two issues correlate with each other. Next slide, please. Um, I did skip over the community engagement slide. I'm sorry about that. I, I'll come back to that maybe after these maps, if that's okay. Um, so the maps on the left are the ACLIMA air quality uh, maps and then the maps on the right are tree canopy. Um, the air quality issues and tree canopy issues are also um, 
in, relate with each other. Areas that, you know, it's not that a lack of trees necessarily create poor air quality, but it's probably, there's so many other sources of air quality in West Oakland that are problematic. You guys are the technical experts on that, like far and wide. That's why we're, the, the urban forest plan is not, doesn't make specific recommendations for what communities need um, is in terms of projects. It's more like the urban forest plan provides the foundation to link like city, city support for um, uh, community led projects like the ones that this group is developing. Um, if I can go to the next slide, please. Um, now here's a doozy. The map on the right, you may have seen in other places that's the red, uh, real estate redlining maps. Um, the areas in red were rated the lowest for federally backed mortgages in the 1930s. And uh, yellow was a slightly higher rating. And then B, like B and A are, are the, the blue and uh, green ones. And those, that's one of the major factors that have influenced the inequities in Oakland. Um, the specifics about West Oakland, I think that there's people on this call who know a lot more history than I do. Um, but this this is the lens that we're seeing things through is that the tree canopy inequities uh, match these other historically discriminatory policies. And um, the areas that were formerly redlined have generally much less street tree canopy and must, much less tree canopy. And these are, this is, this is the data that was collected and analyzed to create the rationale for having equity focused um, policies in our urban forest plan. Next slide. Actually, uh, okay, and here we are zoomed in on West Oakland. You can get a closer look at that. Um, the, the map on the left is street tree canopy and the map on the right is real estate redlining. If I can ask, please, uh, Randolph, could we go back to the community engagement slide now? I'm sorry for going out of order. No problem. So what was the community engagement process for the plan and how did the engagement shift the plan's content? Well, um, we started the urban forest plan right around when COVID hit. And that threw uh, a couple monkey wrenches in where we didn't really know what would be a safe way to do community engagement. And we had a couple false starts. You know, we, we didn't want to do town halls because we didn't um, we didn't want to put people in harm's way. We didn't know if it was safe. The landscape was changing, you know, week to week. And then we tried to do an RFP um, to uh, have a one group do our uh, community engagement. And we didn't get responses. Like there was not quite an appetite to do this type of work. Um, <clears throat> and we learned in this process, like, wow, we really, it was humbling <clears throat> to see Oh, we have a lot to learn about community engagement in general and doing it top down of like, you know, I don't, not sure what the standard would be in the past, but doing it top down of here's a, here's a meeting. Everyone should come to it. The reality is that people aren't going to come to those meetings. So we ended up contracting with four community groups. One of them is common vision who will present to us later. Um, for community groups who already have an existing network of community members that are related to greening and they have authentic um, ways of connecting with them and they have their um, there was common vision the oakland parks and recreation foundation um, the Inter interfaith power and light and the uh, forest and tree and they had their different networks of, of people who are interested and uh, there was a variety of in-person activities um, there were some special events, there was visits in schools, and they, the goal was to educate people about urban forestry, uh, you know, reach out to members of frontline communities specifically, and present a 50-page, uh, or excuse me, a 50-question survey about pe how people valued trees and what their thoughts were on them and what they'd like to see more of or less of in the city's urban forest. And then this, on the back end, the city also did like a social media campaign and that reached out to a, an audience of people who are um, more prone to respond to, you know, tech, tech, uh, tech friendly, you know, uh, publications. So we ended up getting a, 
almost 2,500 survey responses. And I would say that by and large, what the community wants and what the city wants were, were very similar. Um, and it's hard for me to go deep into this without going into all the details of the plan, but I can say with confidence and I can show the connections in all of it of that the goals, objectives and action items of the urban forest plan are all based on the community's vision of what they want. And the community does want social justice and environmental justice. And equity is a part of every single one of our goals, objectives, um, strategies, and specific action items. And this is all written in great detail in the plan. So if I can um, scoot back to the other part of the slideshow, please, uh, and continue. Um, <clears throat> if this is my next slide, um, what are some inequitable tree policies and how will the urban forest cha plan change that, you know, if adopted, what will be our new approach? So currently there's no street tree maintenance or park tree maintenance or planting from the city, citywide, period. Now, those services were discontinued in 2008 um, due to budget cuts. So the plan outlines restoring these services, uh, budgets for them, and it shows you the logistics of, of what that would take, and with a focus on frontline communities such as West Oakland. Uh, another current policy and practice that's inequitable is that we have a service request-based system. So people who are interested in using 311 can request their tree inspected. Um, now we're not still not pruning or planting, but we can um, we can uh, inspect their trees based off the service request. We'll remove trees that are dead, diseased, or dying, um, <clears throat> and there we're not proactively inspecting any trees. Um, so there's inequities to that because not everyone uses three one one or even you know understands the system so well. So our new policy would be to. Um, provide proactive services, focus on frontline communities, and, and and not just be reactive, but have a strategy, you know, based off of uh, more comprehensive service. Um, and another issue we have is that we're, we have extremely limited community engagement and interface with community groups. So we don't really know what people need or what they want, or in, in the case of the WOCAP steering committee, what your dreams and visions are. So we don't know how to support them. Um, so the plan calls for um, increase in city staff to focus solely on community engagement and supporting community and, and groups such as yourselves. Next slide, please. And um, here's some things that, something for this group to chew on because I, there are 70 specific action items in the plan, it's too much for me to list. But here's some ways that like we really love to meet you halfway on and learn like what your thoughts are to have like specific recommendations of how the city can support a group like WOCAP. Um, the, how, how can we foster collaborative public-private partnerships to drive support and implementation for the urban forest plan? Um, how can we support urban forestry initiatives led by our partners? Um, how can we provide opportunities for community participation in urban forest in the urban forest and pathways for green jobs? Um, we will be managing all public trees as green infrastructure, which um, that's that'll be an update in policy where um, there's there's maybe an an archaic uh, past practice of if someone plants their own uh, tree, then the city won't maintain it. Well, we're going to change that and we're going to maintain all trees. So if a community group planted a street tree without a, without a permit or without the city knowing about it, we're, we're not going to turn it into a, uh, a, a back and forth of whose, whose responsibility is. The city will be taking responsibility. And um, also, we're going to maintain and expand tree canopy with a focus on historically underserved neighborhoods. Um, so I, I hope that this is in line with what your intentions are as a group, and we can find numerous ways to interface on these. Next slide, please. Um, in April of, maybe it was, Mar excuse me, March or April of 2023, um, there was a great example of how we implemented an idea that um, was implemented by Common Vision 
and designed by Hyphy Design Labs, where they wanted to create a vegetative buffer along the sound wall of 880. And we got talking about it and I said, gee whiz, let's do it in South Prescott Park. That's a great place for this. And we did it and it was a great event. And uh, Ms. Margaret Gordon was a very compelling speaker at this event. There was press and media there. And it was just an example of what I'm trying to say of supporting community led partnerships and community led urban forestry efforts. This was not a top down, the city decides to do this, everyone do what we say. We provided coordination and access to the site. And it was really the passion of the community that drove this event. There's a there's a hand up. That's Miss Margaret. I'm gonna finish and then we'll take Miss Margaret. Okay. I'm sure she has a, something to say. Of course. Ne mm -hmm. uh, next slide. All right, here here's another way we can help with implementing is that the the map on the right is when we did the citywide tree inventory, we collected all the uh, the points where there could be a street tree, but there isn't one yet. We, um, so that's a GIS layer. And on the left, I drew a very crude image of what that looks like in real life. Hey, there's a parking lot there and there's a big wide sidewalk and there's no trees. What if we shared this data so that if communities wanted street trees here, because I wouldn't assume that they do, not everybody wants a street tree, not every community feels the same way. They might have other priorities, um, but, um, we could provide that information. And if the community wants to have street trees there, um, we could support that through one means or another. Um, next slide, please. So my current timeline that, I, that I'm anticipating, which is not set in stone, is that the public comment period for the urban forest plan will be on October 23rd. So that means that we'll be posting the plan to the city's website on that date. And there will be a software where people can review it um, and they can uh, make comments. They, they can um, on specific parts of it. Um, and I hope this stays on time, but if it doesn't, if it might get pushed back a little bit, it's be outside of my control, but we would love to hear from you. Um, we would love to hear how you specifically think this fits into your work. Um, if we need community you know, feedback and support, uh, what do you like about this? Are there things that you're like, yes, this is great. Um, or no, this is, this is factually inaccurate. You need to make an update on this. Or you have something else to add to it. I don't know what it's like asking for 400,000 people for feedback at the same time. It's gonna be you know, quite a ride, I'm sure. It's totally possible that people might have different opinions, opinions on things. So I, don't, I can't promise that every piece of feedback will become part of the plan but we're gonna at least measure the amount of feedback we have and look for trends in it. And, and we're gonna look at it quantitatively as well as quanti qualitatively. Um, so the more, pe the more people who comment on it, that will help say, hey, we have this many people who actually pay attention and they're aware of it. That's always gonna work in our favor. Um, I'm very confident that this is our best plan for Oakland's urban forest. We've been working on this for years. Um, and we've done it in ways I think are authentic to the Oakland community and values. Um, and I think that specifically this group may take interest in how it supports your work and how it cites it specifically. Um, and there's some bullet points at the bottom here of you know other ways you can think of like, oh, we say that we wanna do uh, green collar job training. If you're like, hey, there's a group of eight teenagers that you know want to do this one thing like those are the tangible examples for implementation that we really want to hear about um, because like I said before city government coming up with an idea then asking everyone to fall into place isn't really the way to, for this to succeed we want to build a bridge from both sides and find out what the community actually wants and then find ways to authentically support that I, this might be my last slide if it is, oh, here's, this is the website that you can plug into your browser and put your email address in, and we will update you when the plan goes public. And this is our homepage, and there'll be more updates on this over the next couple of months, especially as we do public comment period and uh, the you know eventual, eventual uh, proposal to city council. Thank you for your time. I'm sorry if I spoke too long. 
um, but all, all it was it was exhilarating to 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 do this with you. So thank you very much. All great information. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Keeping with our protocol, we're going to start with the steering committee members, and then we're going to move. I know Miss Margaret had her hand up. I believe I saw. Um, so let's start with Alverdia, and then go to Kevin. Okay, this will be quick. Uh, what's the speaker's name again? David. David. Okay, David. Um, how can I? request that you come and speak to one of the other community groups that I belong to, like the RAC, the Residential Action Council for the Hoover Durant area, because this is the type of thing that we uh, push for in our part of West Oakland. I'll, I'll put my email address in the chat for yourself. I, I'm honored that you would be interested in that, and I'll make sure that either myself or another colleague would be able to make a presentation. And if anyone else yeah. feels the Thank same you. way, pl please use my email address to make that request. Thank you. we Will do. Great. Um, Ms. Margaret? I think Kevin was next. Oh, Randall. I'm sorry. Kevin? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, David, for, for this presentation. Uh, so I have a question about the types of trees that you're proposing. I don't know if you have that much detail yet, but you know, you have different goals. One is to increase the canopy. And another goal is for uh, as a vegetated buffer for pollution. Are you identifying different kinds of trees for these different objectives? The, the urban forest plan doesn't go that granular on a specific type of tree species for a specific type of application in general. Uh, but it does speak to transitioning the city towards uh, cl climate change uh, uh, conditions that are anticipated. So that's, the, the plan doesn't make the, the official street tree species uh, list for the, the city. The city can update that on an ongoing basis. And it does, the, the plan does not dictate what trees should be planted on private property. Um, so, so I would say that it speaks of the intention to create shade or, or match a, a tree to the right um, conditions, but that's, that's sort of like a more technical and specific topic than what the plan is, is scoped to do. Okay, thanks. Great, Alexis. Hi, David. I just had a question to see, to kind of put this in context compared to other cities in the Bay Area. Um, do you like other cities like San Francisco, Berkeley, San Jose have these kinds of plans and how is this different? How does this differ if it does? How is it the same? Um, yeah, I just like, Love to understand kind of what other Bay Area cities are doing and how this compares. Thanks. Sure. Well, the uh, having an urban forest plan is considered the industry standard to comprehensively manage a city's urban forest. We live in a world of data and statistics driving how money is spent. And if you can't, it, it, it's very difficult to manage some a resource that isn't properly like analyzed. And that's what the, the plan does is we, starting with the inventory and canopy analysis, go very, very deeply run, like develops the data and statistics so that the urban forest can be analyzed and we can look at trends. We have canopy, you know, tracking over uh, different years and we can see we're actually citywide losing tree canopy. There's a trend on that. So like, so now you know that, well, what would it take to reverse that trend? And you can do modeling and then it's like, okay, well, what will be the budget to do that? And yes, yeah, San Francisco has an urban forest plan. Um, what's, what's, and nationwide, many cities have that. Um, but what's most important is that, does this work for Oakland or not? Because if we want to find an example of, oh, well, this city does it that way, this city does it that way. It doesn't necessarily mean we need to copy them or that we should ignore them. We need to think of like, what is really the, 
what does Oakland need right now? And considering that Oakland hasn't had funding for tree planting or tree maintenance, but has so, close to 70,000 trees that it's supposed to manage, that's just a, that's an astonishing bunch of information for me to string together in a sentence. So if we, if, considering all the priorities of Oakland and the things that change and come up and, oh, now we have to worry about this, now we have to worry about that. It, it We're not really even at the conversation table unless we think of how to manage this at, at a higher level. Great, thanks. We'll take um, any more from steering committee members. We'll take a couple more before we hear from Ms. Margaret. Others? Sony? Yeah, hi, um, David, I was just interested in what type of public-private partnerships were you thinking about? I know that you have contracted with some um, great organizations and CBOs. Were you thinking of um, additional partnerships outside of that? Because I know you mentioned um, the budget, but are you planning to use some private industry to help fund some of this? Or what were some of your thoughts on, on that direction? The plan goes into more detail on potential funding sources that does include external funding, such as grants um, or you know state and federal grants. But this, like I, I've been trying to emphasize, the city government doesn't have all the strengths. Oftentimes, local groups have complementary strengths. Um, and one example of this is, I hope I'm not stealing too much from Wanda's slides, is that she'll speak to this, is that the city applied for an Inflation Reduction Act grant for $8 million for community greening and Oakland's frontline communities, including tree maintenance and tree planting and green collar workforce development. And we applied with Common Vision and the Oakland Parks and Recreation Foundation and we've been awarded $8 million, $8 million to do that. So you get like way more opportunities to do work when you partner properly with other groups. And a fun fact is that only about a quarter of our city's tree canopy is on public property. So there's just like way more land to access that the city doesn't have jurisdiction to operate on. And those partnerships are really vital to do that. Me? Yeah, uh, I just had a quick question. I'm just curious um, about the size and the complexity of the urban forest plan and whether there were efforts being made to uh, make ensure that it, it's easily easily uh, understandable for community members to read and you know provide comment later. That's certainly our intention from the get-go is that this is actually going to be an interesting and accessible urban forest plan. We avoid we intentionally avoided the technical speak and had a style guideline to make make this written in a way that it could be conversational to someone that you rode the bus with that day. Um, and the audience will tell us if it if we met that mark or not, but I certainly hope we did. Thank you. Great. And we're gonna wrap up this section. Um, I, well, and I don't know, they didn't tell me where I was in the in the new protocol, but like if you wanted to do that, about how much does it take to to break up the sidewalk and plant a tree, plant one tree? In terms of time or money? Uh, let's go with time. Let's go with money. It's it's expensive and challenging to plant a street tree. This is you're doing construction now in the in the sidewalk in the public right of way. It's not your backyard. If you make a boo boo, you could be creating a trip hazard that you could be liable for, or you could be hitting a pipe underground. Like, yeah. so th this this is a pretty serious operation. Yeah. Community groups in the past have done the work, but the amount of effort to the outcomes is it's a high effort to just getting one tree planted. Um, so the I think that the cost for just the construction that you're talking about, jackhammering, uh, sidewalk cutting, uh, excavation, possibly repairing, you know, putting in new soil, the tree is the cheapest part. 
you know, it's a hundred dollar tree and then coming back and watering it for three years and restaking it if it gets unstaked. Yeah. This is like thousands of dollars to yeah, plant I one tree. Just, I was just asking because you've got on the right side, you've got, you know, recommendations on where to put one. And if somebody said, Hey, I want to put one here, we got the perfect spot. Like, you know, like what's the likelihood yeah. that that well, would happen? The, the, the plan if funded calls for street tree planting on a large scale. What this, what this uh, like um, GIS layer helps with is that where do you know where where do you implement this work? Hey, uh, David, if I were to plant street trees in West Oakland, how much money would I need? Well, I could say I have this many dots, which could be viable planting locations. The average street tree planting cost is this. Multiply that. That's probably the amount of money you'd need. Okay, I don't have all that. I could. I have a third of that. Okay, well, you could you could do a maybe a third of these dots. So so it, this gives us the actual information to make planning decisions from. And we would love to hear from groups of saying like, hey, we want to plant all street trees in this area. Um, is there a demand for that? Well, if the city has funding to do that work, well, that's a great place to start. Is where people actually want the trees because planting a tree in a neighborhood doesn't necessarily mean it's going to live. Someone could vandalize it if they if if it's not welcome there. But when the community has buy-in, the there's a, there's a significantly greater chance of that tree surviving and actually growing to be a large size. Gotcha. So we're going to close it out with Miss Margaret before we go to our esteemed colleague Brett Brett Brent Bucknam. Um, Miss Margaret, Did you call my name? Well, yeah, we were thanking David for his presentation, and we were going to close out uh, this section. Okay, I, I, I want I, I can wait to after Brett and Wanda give their presentation. Okay. All right. Again, uh, and thanks. I thanks to David. Really appreciate it. a lot of great information. Let's get Thank some you. Trees. Let's get some trees going. All right. Brent? Oh, I'm sorry. I miss Felicia. No, I was trying to do thumbs up and heart to uh, David. Oh. <laughs> okay, great. So we're going to move to the uh, Prescott Greening uh, scope of work. Great. So and I'm going to be uh, super brief so we can hopefully still have some time after Wanda too to have discussion. Um, one of the reasons I'm going to be brief is that we're actually planning with the co lead sometime in January or February. Hasn't been decided exactly doing more of a, a focused Prescott Greening presentation. So I'll just go over a little bit of, in this context, kind of like context of how it might relate to David and Wanda's work and then what our goals are, and then really just focus on the scope with a plan to have a, a very deep dive. So um, as far as context, I think some of the things people were asking like Kevin and others around um, David's plan, I think the Prescott Greening Plan uh, provides a good opportunity to essentially sort of build off that and zero in on actual specific interventions and greening and what the plant species are, for example, um, and then provide the opportunity for groups like Wanda's and others to then work to go plant those. So this work sort of at a project scale um, sits between those. And the hope is really to zoom in more from sort of the inventory and the general plan to come up with a a focused uh, greening plan for a specific area for a specific reason. So in this context, our specific focus is this broader red area, which was defined um, in the AB 617 plan as one of the primary impact areas um, from pollution and other impacts. So the scope of this project is to target and try to improve air quality through greening and other strategies uh, throughout this whole area. And that um, then includes a number of different possible interventions and a new sort of way of looking at this type of urban greening and intervention, which really uses sort of evidence-based modeling and environmental modeling tools to sort of vet which are the best designs. So we will get into more of that in January, but just to go over the scope of the work, we're gonna be working with Caltrans obviously and the city and others to vet the possibility for planting in Caltrans area, which is shown in, orange here. And I think we're excited about the opportunity for this project to be sort of a precedent um, and showcase of how we work with Caltrans on these greenings. Um, we're also looking at this blue strip, which is um, frontage road. And we're looking at ways that we can improve pedestrian access, bike 
access greening through medians. Um, and one other component is the purple strip, which is how does this project relate to the GoCore project um, and integrate and interface with that. And then finally, really, it's hard to see in this diagram. <laughs> we'll get into it more, but there is a small yellow strip there, which is certain planting that we can start to do on um, frontage road that already exists. And we're talking with Common Vision and others about starting to be able to do that. And then similarly planting throughout the neighborhood um, in Prescott here uh, with different greening strategies. So starting to make this sort of a priority area that we target with Common Vision and others, and hopefully becomes a precedent of how we sort of take David's master plan down to sort of a project level intervention and prioritization of different um, interventions. So, just a quick overview. Great. More. Thanks. Do we want to take Wanda first and then take all the questions later? Let's do that. All right. And I love the the, the environment that you've created there. Uh, it's very, yeah. <laughs> Are you okay. laughing at my picture? No, I'm I'm talking to Brent. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Brent looks like he's in a closet or something. Oh, well. Either that or it's just or he's got some lighting effects going on. Oh, man. One of the I, two. <laughs> I've been I've been forced outside due to a potential COVID exposure from my wife. So oh. I'm, I'm sitting on my porch. <laughs> it's, 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 Wanda. I've been sorry. there, bro. I've been I there, heard bro. you miss Martin. All right, Wanda. Wanda, you're muted. Yes, I'm not sure how that happened. Hi, everybody. That can be a good thing sometimes. <laughs> uh, I am um, really honored to uh, be following David and Brent in uh, this presentation because I really do believe that when all of us align our skills and our resources and our know how um, on some really, hello, on a common vision, we can get this work done. We can get these trees in the ground. Um, very quickly, uh, I was at um, McClyman's High School last night because I've been participating in their uh, community meetings about redesigning the school. My way of easing into McClyman's while my children that started at Hoover Elementary and kindergarten are growing their way towards that. And uh, in the middle of the meeting, one gentleman said, well, I'm angry because I heard that the city of Oakland got $8 million and we're not gonna get any of them. And how are we gonna? And I was able to raise my hand and go, sir, I'm part of that $8 million. I can promise you that I have trees for McClyman, right? Uh, then another gentleman, a woman stood up and said, I work for Hood Associates and we're going to be doing the landscaping. And same gentleman, I'm really pissed off. We didn't know about the RFP. We don't even know who these people are. Strangely, I can raise my hand and say, I'm from Philadelphia. So is Walter Hood. We used to party when we were 20 years old. I promise you he's famous. He's very good. And he's a black man. And that gentleman could say, okay. And when I talked to Walter's associate, she said, well, if you can give us trees for McClyman's, can you give us trees for St. Mary's Center on San Pablo down at 30th when we do that? Absolutely, I can guarantee you trees for that. And so I used that example to show and demonstrate the ways in which we're all connected to do this work. <clears throat> um, Common vision, we like to do our work in and through the schools, or at least use the schools as a base of operation. Uh, teaching kids environmental education, teaching them to grow their own food, teaching them how to take care of their bodies and use food as medicine. But school gardens are also remarkable avenues for growing authentic community, right? And the first way to do that is to educate the folks before you try to engage them and move from there. So I believe that Common Vision has been fostering the relationships um, around the circle of involvement uh, to get this work done. I um, wanna stand by David Moore. David Moore, 
full stop. I know that this work gets done because of the personal relationships we have with each other. That's why I'm showing all these pictures that are up there. I know that if David and I trust each other and I believe what he says, and I know him to be a good man trying to make the city work and do good by its community, I can partner and do that with him. And the same for Brent and the same for Mandolin in the Oakland Parks and Rec Foundation. There's so much money and responsibility coming down around greening our communities that I think the only way we can work together is by doing it in a non-competitive way. Trees for Oakland, Planting Justice, Conservation Corps, groups we have never even heard of can work together to, um, for what it was Mandolin that said, it's trees for all of us, it's clean air for all of us, right? Um, David had a way better picture of Miss Margaret than I've got in there. But uh, that finger pointing, you cannot <laughs> imagine what that set off that day. The very next day, I took a call from Cindy Blaine, who is the executive director of California Relief, who had been at the event. And she said, Wanda, you have to come and do a keynote speech at our retreat because Miss Margaret's really got me fired up. I can't believe everything that woman said. Oh my God, what have we white people been thinking? And that speech that Miss Margaret gave that day is demonstration of the impact that a single individual can have. And when we put someone like Miss Margaret at the center of that and work outward, we've got something. Um, shout out to the other people in that picture. There's um, Gordon who works with David. There's uh, Derek Emmons who has been a tree advocate and works for the Contra Costa County Research Conservation District. Um, there's Emily uh, Zuckerberg who does our grant writing lined up with Mandolin. Kadera Redmond, who runs Oakland Trees and Rec. And all of these are pictures that occurred in happenstance, but these are the people that need to be in it. Okay, next uh, slide, please. And then there's the individual people, right? And we're ready to do that work. There's getting Oakland residents, there's finding volunteers, there's maybe paying people and doing workforce development, right? so that we can give people careers or provide them with avenues to careers. Um, the gentleman in the center with the sort of rainbow t-shirt on is the lead landscaper for the uh, gardens at the Bishop O'Dowd High School. Four acres cultivated and they just bought another 20 acres across the street. And he, in combination with the Catholic Church, have more money than you can believe to invest in environmental greening. And they have a high school of 800 kids who want to participate and do community service in that. And yes, he's the president of Common Visions Board of Trustees, right? The young woman next to him is a Cal volunteer from, from Berkeley. That There's amazing numbers of young people who are ready and committed to do this work. Um, the lady in the orange jumpsuit is honestly a West Oakland resident. Um, not always working, sometimes on the street, you know, the whole sort of nitty gritty thing. And uh, she was helping us in the Martin Luther King Elementary School garden where there was a particular tree that was grossly overgrown and uh, shading everything. And the school district said, well, actually, that's not our land. That's the church's land. Well, I, the church said, nope, that's not our land. That's the school district. And it's in this sort of gray zone of land ownership. We were never going to get anybody to come out and prune it. And Autumn is her name. She said, Wanda, go away and come back. And when I came back, that tree had been completely pruned. I'm not going to name names of what organization was able to help us get that done. But Autumn 
at the street level got that tree pruned and it was a beautiful thing. Um, I also invite you to notice how many of the faces in these pictures are brown um, by design, but also about effective outreach and engagement, right? And when it's true, I, I get a little bit tired of all the uh, BIPOC this and that, right? Um, it can be very hard to be hired because you're a black woman and then get jammed because you're just a black woman. It's a, it really is a double-edged sword. Um, but there are a lot of grants and there are a lot of really good intentions around developing entrepreneurship among folks at the ground level who are black and BIPOC uh, related. Um, next slide, please. And I believe it's our schools and it's the kids. We can teach the kids better than we can uh, bring the adults along, honestly. If you started planting trees in kindergarten and you've been taking care of them as your everyday school experience and you've watched yourself grow like you've watched that tree grow, when you go out into the world, you understand environmental stewardship and the importance of that. Um, and you create children that do that and you make a culture within your own life that supports that work. Um, I believe we have the folks ready to do that. The young people feel the urgency and they're looking to all of us to take care of that. Um, up to the right on top is Van Cedric Williams. He's the school district representative for West Oakland. He's down, he wants to see this happen. He was in the meeting with McClymans last night. He was at South Prescott Park. Um, the lady in red, and I gotta tell you, she had red stilettos on too, and she was standing in compost. She happens to be the superintendent of Berkeley Unified School District. But she's an example of where a superintendent can lead her district in doing the right thing among the kids. Um, in this case, they planted what is called a Miyawaki forest. Um, it happens to be a couple of blocks from my house in South Berkeley. Um, for the tree geeks out of there, the growth in the understory is remarkable. It was only planted six months ago and it looks like it's been there for a minute. Um, and then lastly, I would point you to the baby doll down on the left in the corner. This kid, uh, Autumn got the trees cut down. We had to get rid of the branches. We taught them about hugel culture. And we also bought in a chipper and the kids got to carry the logs around. And that young man who is probably in the fourth grade, but truly he's only about three feet tall. He's really very, very short, but strong and stocky, was totally elated to be doing. He said, I love trees. This is what I want to do. And this kid got to work. And they can save us and they can lead us. And what it takes is for governmental systems like David and private efforts like Brent and the West Oakland Environmental Plan and Common Vision and all the other organizations like us, we are not the only one, to step together to the table and get it together for the children. Um, so I don't see uh, the challenge in this work as uh, requested of me to address is, yep, the people. I've been heard to say that growing pomegranates is easier than growing people. And if you're not a farmer tree person, growing pomegranates is hard and it takes a lot of time, right? The people work is good, but if we know each other, and heaven forbid, love each other in this environment, we can get it done. Uh, plants in place, go right back to that other slide, please, for a hot second, Randolph. Um, these are all the things that we know that we need to do to get trees in the ground, right? Identifying other funding sources, right? We wrote a plan for $22 million and pulled back eight. Eight million is a celebration, but obviously we need more than that. Hi, Shepard. Site identification and working with David, working with the school district. 
I will tell you the school district is a big bear to work with too, but they are coming to the table and they're ready to talk about planting trees there. So that in all of this, Common Vision can focus on what we do best, individual residents and schools. And the schools have a lot of land. Responsible coordination, tree list development, like it was asked, using the technology like Brett Buckham has, and figuring out how to keep everything watered. And that's it, last slide. Um, just to say, our thoughts are the roots is, uh, that bulletin board that I found in a school. And um, we can plant some amazing trees with amazing roots as long as we uh, keep moving forward and work together in a way that's effective. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for all your work. Yep. All right. So discussion, we've got a few things. And remember, and in the meantime, I'm also going to put in um, a link to the evaluation, so you can be doing that at the same time. Um, but uh, steering committee members. Uh, yeah, Randolph, I just want to say here, so I think we should ha let people ask questions of the speakers. We had planned a 20 minute discussion to talk about, to get feedback from you on the pieces of the um, urban forest plan, which we do not have time for because we need to make sure meat has time to talk about our upcoming community event next, in November. So what I'm gonna propose, if people are okay with it, is we can spend a few more minutes doing Q&A for the speakers, and then we can set up a standalone meeting once the full plan comes out, where we'll get um, feedback from folks, like we'll go over what's in the plan and collect input from you all to create our comment letter. And then potentially if David or his team are available, they can maybe set up a table at our um, event in November to get additional feedback from West Oakland residents on this plan. So do people feel, and I've already invited David, this isn't the first time he's hearing about the November 5th event. So are people okay with postponing the discussion or do people want to stay a half an hour longer right, today? Let's, let's do this. So I was going to take some questions. Meet just needs a little bit of time to kind of share where we are in the planning because we're coming up. The town hall meeting is in um, in November. And so I'm going to give him that. And then we're going to close out um, with um, the urban forest plan. Perfect. Meet. Oh, are you sending me next? Yes. Okay. You are next. Uh, thank you. So just a quick, quick slide. Won't take much time. Uh, as everyone can see, um, we have a new name. Uh, we are not calling it the town hall. We are calling it owning our air community fair, uh, which is much more interesting and hopefully less boring than just calling it town hall for people to attend. Um, so we do want everybody to just mark their calendars for November fifth um, at the at, at the Deformity Park. Um, and the next step I would like the steering committee to uh, do is to fill out a form um, in terms of, oh, let me just get that. Fill, fill out this volunteer form um, where we just want to grab some details um, and it won't take much time in terms of just avail your availability during the day and being at the event. But I do want to encourage everybody out here to um, be at this uh, town hall because it's going to be um, uh, it's going to be really good. Um, and uh, just another update in terms of uh, there's going to be an event pride page, uh, event pride page as well, which will go live next week. Um, so stay tuned for that, and you can use that as well to secure your spots. And we do hope you all uh, that everybody, each and every one out here, can share that link. Um, and I can send that. I will be sending that in a recap mail as well um, later. So. Um, and also I'll be providing flyers by next week, hopefully both digital and hard copy. So you all can use that to share the word um, in your, in your, within, within your communities and uh, to your friends and families as well. So or Nicole, thank you. Can you change the permissions on the form? Cause it, none of us can open it. You I can do that. Public. Yeah. Meet's doing that right now, Beth. And what time is the community fair from when to when? From 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. And, 
and Miss Margaret, are, is this on the town hall? I mean, on the owning our air community fair, or is this um, for the urban forest? My comments go back as far as the two or three previous agenda items. <laughs> what about the uh, Prescott Green down to where we are right now? So uh, I would not speak about any of those, but I will talk about offline how make a making sure assurances that I as part of the codes do have a voice in this process. In which process? Uh, and this uh, and this and this uh, uh, okay maybe I'm using the wrong word wrong word how do I have a voice uh, when people include me in their presentations? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't get to have a, a word on the pictures or that Wanda presented no, about the forestry project. Oh, there was some context that you wanted to provide around your. I, 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 I don't want to hold the meeting. Okay. I just, I just, we just need to have this conversation offline. Okay, we can discuss that tomorrow. Okay, um, I shared the survey link, and um, I believe Alberti is having a little trouble accessing it. But let's go back. And it's still saying we need permission. It says only the people from I'm part of this group and I'm not available. I mean, it's not available to me. Okay, so we'll fix that. And okay. do we want to start? Who wants to start the conversation? And and if we can if we can have another five minutes, if people could stay till eight oh five, then we'll have nine minutes. Who's first on the, uh, this is about the urban forest plan, goals and strategies, and let's get nine minutes worth of comments. Or if any people had questions for the speakers, we can take those two and, and we'll still follow up with other opportunities to participate in the plan since. So steering committee members, any questions on, or comments on the urban plan? I mean, the urban forest plan. So to our presenters, is there any uh, prompts that you'd like to share to get feedback on? David, Brent, Wanda? Uh, uh, okay, let's go with Miss Margaret. <laughs> you're, um, you're on mute, though. I can't hear your audio. Excuse me? Your audio is very low. Okay, I'll try and speak louder. Um, we were taking prompts for the steering committee members in the public to respond to. To what? From the presenters. We're talking about the urban forest plan. I, I, I'm going to wait to do my eyes in the Cody's meeting. Okay. So, um, please, uh, please, as the agenda item. Gotcha. All right. All right. Others? David? Wanda? Brent? I'll, I'll say that I'd be, I'd be glad to come to a, the town hall meeting or a, a follow up meeting to speak more about the plan when it's really there. I listed this list of five goals and strategies I'd love for the steering co committee members to, to think of specific examples of how the urban forest plan could support 
um, or, or your your specific proposals for that. Um, I have nothing further to add beyond that, and I would be happy to hear from the other speakers if, if there's no questions for me directly. I do have a question. I do have one question. Okay. David. Yes. Does your forestry plan include the Port of Oakland? In what way? Anyway. Yes or no? I'm trying to think of how to best answer your question. It doesn't make recommendations specifically for any property, Ms. Margaret. If if there's something that you would like to suggest as, as something to incorporate that I'm not aware of. Okay, okay. It, it, it doesn't right speak there. to the it doesn't speak to the Port of Oakland. Okay, I do need to stop right there. Please stop right. I'm, I'm trying to help you enhance what your conversation should be. All right. Thank you. I, when I say I'm trying to enhance you here right here. Okay. If the Port of Oakland is being excluded as a section area of the city of Oakland, as far as the forestry plan, that is a violation, a real violation of looking at civil rights in Title VI. We should be having a cross, your portion plan should not exclude those industrial areas or industrial areas that pertain to freight import. And in your delivery, I'm, I'm trying to help you here. The, that is a a very known a study and evidence and facts that the Port of Oakland is the biggest exposure to health, proximity to the West Oakland community. And for them not to have be not to have be subject to not to be subject to the same overall geographic planting of trees based on the health of wealth West Oakland has to be a more full-fledged conversation. And I don't know from your department that you're working from that that would be included into the uh, the joint grouping of agencies for the working group. But I, but for my assurance that I will bring it up once this joint interagency working group on the general plan has to include the port, the port area for forestration. Okay, so what we're seeing is that they're not included or excluded and that the port has their own plan. So I, I think that's a longer uh, discussion about how to make them do more in terms of planting trees in their high uh, uh, oh, Let me say this here. Why would we not have, why, why would we not have a, have a, a area is the most polluting mm -hmm. or exposure, they have the most exposure to one community 
or along the 880 corridor to be excluded from not being part of the forestry strategies. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so, we'll, oh. well, that, um, again, that would be a, a discussion. Um, David, if you could respond to even that. under the even under the general plan yeah okay so that is um a question that will be tabled uh, but addressed do we have any other steering committees that have questions or comments on the urban plan before we wrap uh yes Ms. yes Alberti. wait a minute yes hold on I, i'm trying to get out of this right here yes i do um can I can I go? I didn't my yeah. phone had changed the screen so I couldn't find it. Okay. Um regarding what Miss Margaret spoke on, I attended a meeting uh that the port had regarding uh the changes that they're having making at Seventh Street and the greenery and buffering. Uh, was a big issue that was spoke on. So I'm kind of like Miss Margaret, you know, it would behoove you not to um, incorporate it into uh, what you were suggesting for the urban forestry uh, because they're working to, towards those ends as 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 we speak. And Miss um, Margaret, what group was that? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Tamara, Tamara White. Um, okay. The uh -huh. Yes. So yes. We got a, we got a second okay. on that. Okay. All right. I just wanted to other, get that out there. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Other steering committee members or others before we wrap it up? Lots of work I, to do. Lots of work to do. Brent? I had one question there for David, and obviously you don't have to answer it now, but maybe in the grander context, this might speak to you know what some others were saying too, is showing that the goal is to sort of support these initiatives by other partners. One of my questions was just mechanistically over time, is there gonna be a way to like add these projects that different community groups are doing, or for example, like the Prescott Greening project we're doing to add those sort of two the city's master plan in some way or to, you know show those projects that are yeah Brent I, I think that the last three questions will all make a lot more sense in the context of when you see the plan um, is that it's not specific to any project that it's more of the basis by which guides policies and suggestions if city council says we agree with these values, objectives, goals, strategies, and then opportunities for partnerships or, or projects or, or anything, decisions come up. We can always point back to say, city council already agreed that this is the direction that we're growing in. I'm using that example right now because people say, why should we have an urban forest plan? Well, in the equitable climate action plan, it says, you know, goal number, I can't remember, R22, is that the city should have an urban forest plan. So then it, everything is sort of incremental and referencing the last step. So the urban forest step will be referenced when something like what you're describing comes up, or if there's a partnership with another agency that could be Caltrans, it could be the port. Those things will come up, but I, I hope that when the, the plan draft is, is reviewed that these, these things, the context is better understood. All right, we can't wait to see the Thank secret you. plan. So no secret, no, definitely not a secret. Yes. So you said you, you can neither confirm nor deny. I get it. That's a good one. That's a that's a good answer. Um, I want to. Oh, Miss Margaret. I have one more point. We, I, I have been engaged with the Oakland adaptation plan that supports greening the freeways from of eight eighty. And that should be incorporated in this forestry plan. Awesome. Certainly. And I would like to see it as a reference. 
That includes the Port of Oakland. As my, I have traveled, let me finish. I have traveled many uh, countries over my, since 1992, of living in West Oakland. And every, every other community I have been to, the freeways and the highways have a specified specified plan of emission reduction based on trees. It's just only in northern, this part of Northern California, they don't have such a thing. All right, thank you. Random, I think you got to take us home here because we're yeah. running, you know, we got to yeah. respect the, the people's yeah. time. Alicia's going to close us out and then we're going to thank everybody and I was just going to say thank you to David for coming tonight when the plan was not yet public. I know that was uh, so we, um, you know, we're happy to be your warm up and hope hoping that, uh, you know, we can definitely communicate these uh, comments when the plan comes out. Thanks. All right. Okay. Thank you. So thank you all for joining. Thank you all for staying over a couple of extra minutes. Um, drive safe. <laughs> and uh, we will see you. Um, we're going to publish the notes. And we will see you all uh, next month. And I would like to say thank Thanks, you, David. Everybody. Yep. I'm Wanda. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Our presenters. Thank you. Thanks.